I'm with my real ones, my real ones, my real ones. Run it up with my real ones, run it up with my real ones. Coming up with my real ones, coming up with my real ones. I only fuck with the real ones, real ones, my 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 real ones. Run it up with my real ones. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but we trying to book you. You know what I'm saying? We want you here. Because I really want you, gangster, bro. You leave with your change. You that nigga. Gang. Here with the thing, though. You, you that me. nigga. You leave with your change, folks. I'm we not putting no. We not putting no. You putting your license guns in your videos. Come on, Big man. Yeah. My, yeah. My shit is good money. All that. You need that. something to wear. Something. If you want something, no game, you feel what I'm saying? If you want to take you, something. You just take what you want. If, if you if you want to take something, what I'm you telling take you. Take what you want. You know, I just I just take, need what I want. Take, I don't take, want it all. Gang, take everything. You did go big or go home because, bitch, I'm going to send you home. That's what I'm saying. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, my God. All right, say that. For so, sure. So you don't want to watch nothing, then? Gang, that's what I'm saying. Go big or go home because you know where you're going. You feel? Yeah, right. home, home with your chain. Home, exactly, home. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah home. So, I'm, I'm, hey, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to put you right with your homies. You feel me? I'm, I'm going to put you right with your homies. Big facts. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Welcome back to The Rap Trap, I'm Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Me and Two movement, and this, of course, is in hindsight. Today, I want to talk about an artist that's from Syracuse, New York, but sound like he's straight out of Atlanta, just like every other, it, just like every artist sound. Like, everybody, you know how they say the world um, is going to be all mixed in, in, in the future and shit like that? Whatever future, near future, whatever the fuck. All the whole world gonna be just mixed, just one race of mix. That's what the music is now. Just everybody just is from Atlanta. That's just how the fuck music sounds. This artist's name is 2C. Whatever the fuck. 2C two times. And uh he just recently came on my radar for whatever fucking reason. Um He's on live. Folks, you know what time it is. Uh, I might use this at the beginning just so y'all can see. Um, so y'all can hear the conversation. But he was into it with a nigga named Ziggy Fo Fo Fitty. Ziggy Fo Fitty. Um. Two guns, Vito exposing a little soldier. In the battle of hand with no more murder, no fat in on them niggas. We would've shot that bitch off. I swear to God, we would've pulled a finesse two times in that bitch. The Federal Bureau would be trying to investigate a rat man, killing bitches across the state around. I'm talking about for real. Nigga, make her look so bad. These niggas from South Carolina call me talking about two guns. Do you, you wanna buy the chain, baby? A fake chain? Do I wanna buy it? That's crazy. Boy, it is. See that's 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 some whole that's a whole nother episode. Uh I don't know who that but he gotta be from Alabama cause a soldier from Alabama. Um so I'm gonna have to speak on that shit. Cause they uh little soldier got his chain snatched. I, I I ain't get to talk about that. I will speak on it. But um right now, the beef I'm talking about is uh between um some niggas that you probably never heard of. Uh, of course, uh two C two C two times and Ziggy for Fritty, for Fitty, and so he, he trying to say four five, four Fitty, Ziggy for Fitty. Okay, um, what happens is if I put the video at the beginning of the show, um, the nigga 
was trying to jank um, Tootsie Roll because he has legal guns in his video. And it's like that in or like and it's crazy because I'm gonna be honest with you. It's crazy because as gangsters and street niggas in that as a gangster and street nigga mindset, that is kind of a diss. And it's a it's a valid diss. Like, nigga, you in the video with guns that are licensed. Guns that are in your name. Like, nigga, that's, that's kind of, it is kind of lame. And it's like, it, it shows how fucked up we are. Like, nigga, that is saying if you are in a video any gun that you have in that video is supposed to be illegal. This there's an individual on YouTube. His name is Big Facts. I like his perspective. His perspective is different from mine. Like this is what dumb niggas be thinking, bro. I'm not hood, my nigga. I'm not like. There's a perspective that I'm gonna give because I'm academic. So I'm not gonna front it. I'm not gonna fake it. It's not gonna be whatever. I'm gonna do me. I listen to this guy, he gives a different perspective, it's comical, it's fucking, like, different, and it makes you feel as if, oh, you're not the same, like, guy who's, who call the cops like academics, or who's not about that shit, like academics, or who don't have baby mama like academics, mm -hmm. you now feel different, and I listen to that guy, and I said, yo, this shit is dope, I listen to him in a car, for two days, so I say that to it's it, what what like why is that like why it's, it's supposed to be a, a hot gun? It's supposed to be, and if that's not the case, then why the fuck is that a valid diss? You telling the nigga that nigga you in a video with them license ad gun with them legal guns? What the fuck, nigga? The, the, a legal gun got less lethal bullets than a a, a a dirty gun. What the fuck? But that's just how fucked up we are, and that's part of this. That's what, um, it's a fucking trap. It's a trap. How is that not a trap? If you don't put yourself in harm's way, if you don't put yourself in a situation to where you can be arrested, killed, robbed, harmed, then we ain't fucking with you, man. We ain't fucking with you. Nigga, if you won't, if you won't drop your location, show money, show gun, you just heard the other nigga, uh, whoever the fuck that was, talking about some nigga, uh, we will be on channel. We'll be investigated by the FBI right now, but we'll pull up finesse two time. And you see what the fuck finesse two time is? Finesse two time did exactly what the fuck you were supposed to do in street niggas' eyes, and look what the fuck he's at. Do you believe that the streets is gonna fuck with him when he get streets? Do you believe that he like the streets is gonna? I say it. The streets are they gonna fuck with him and support? Are they are, are they fucking with him and supporting him now? Is he taken care of? Are street niggas writing him? This is what I'm telling you. Outside of the rap trap, the street trap, the shit that they asked you to do for their validation to, to make them be like, yeah, boy, you a real nigga. That's all they give you. That's like the boss man after you done work 80 hours at the job uh, saying, no, we don't got no check for you. I'm going to give you a firm handshake. What the fuck? boy. Nigga, where's my fucking money? But that's all you get from this shit. The street is a firm fucking you might not get that. You follow the fucking street code to the fucking letter, man. And motherfuckers might still come up with some fucking rumor to destroy your fucking character. And it's like, what you gonna do then? Do you go and murder the nigga? I mean, that's what you supposed to do. You supposed to go murder the nigga. And anybody who it, uh, carried on that rumor. But 
at some point you have to say, all right, so hold on. So if I just pulled a superhero move by the street, by a street code, I just did some superhero shit. I should be getting celebrated. And I'm getting what a nigga would say is violated. If you start a room about me, after I didn't follow the street code to the letter, I did some shit that normal niggas won't do. After doing that, I get shit on. So now I need to go follow the street code even more. After I followed the street code and did not get what I was supposed to get in return, I'm still supposed to follow the street code? Fuck that shit. Nigga, for whoever started the rumor and anyone who passed on the rumor or believed the rumor, y'all keep that. Y'all can have that shit. This shit is a fucking mirage. This shit is not fucking real. And nigga, it shouldn't take you to get out and niggas have a rumor for you to understand that this, this shit is bullshit. It should, you should know that it's bullshit when you go in and niggas ain't putting no money on your books. That right there should be, oh yeah, this shit ain't, this, this is bullshit. But then you can chuck that up to where they, they don't know if I'm going to hold it down or not. But it's like, that is what's supposed to keep a nigga. That's what's supposed to make a nigga hold it down. It's like, nigga, we, we here with you. We here with you. You go down and shit like that, you get hit, and niggas don't send you shit. They're like, nigga, you want a nigga to, to, to violate the code. You showing a nigga that ain't no fucking loyalty unless I'm there. I'm doing all this shit in the street so that my name hold weight. And you would believe that. But just as soon. And this is how you know what niggas gonna do when you leave here permanently. When you go to jail, you see how motherfuckers Like, my nigga, I'm still alive. Like, you talk, like, nigga. And, and we get out and we still fuck with those people who wouldn't answer the phone. Just for maybe a conversation so you can get your mind off being in this bitch. Even though when you locked up, what you want to do is focus on being in there and fuck the outside. Focus on being in here. Get acclimated in here. Don't don't you trying don't be trying to live in two worlds. What's going on out that bitch? Nah, fuck all that. Stay the fuck off that phone and just stay right here. Live here. Get on that phone ain't gonna do nothing but make you anxious and angry. But that that's 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 the, the, the whole thing with the street. That whole thing is, you know, so when niggas reference finesse two times. You know, some niggas, and, and this, this is another part of the rap trap, niggas will try to write two times and send them money just so they can put that shit on the ground. Like, this is, and this is why I gotta do a video about uh, Fred O'Bain and G Money. That's gonna be a crazy one now. This is what, like, this rap shit. And that's why I tell motherfuckers that rap shit is far more dramatized. It's far more controversial, controversial, um, political, and underhanded than than the trap. Like because in the trap, a nigga knows what's gonna happen or what's supposed to happen when he robs somebody. In this shit. Robbing a person is part of the game. It's supposed to happen. You know, smiling in people's face, having to make relationships and shit like that. And then, and then, how, not knowing how a person is going to take that. Okay, so as an artist, what I'm supposed to do is, you know, uh, we go to Atlanta, so I'm from fucking, you know, 
uh, Ohio, come to Atlanta, you know, supposed to, you know, show love to niggas, meet niggas and shit like that and do your thing, but because you ain't come down this bitch with, with, with gun in both pocket, nigga, and tell fuck nigga, what's up? I don't doubt, I ain't no friendly ass nigga, fuck nigga. And it, I'm telling you, it's more thrown off than the, than, than the street because when you go to prison, you not supposed to, like, nigga, you coming in this bitch with, nigga, I give a fuck like that, like, acting like you, you know what I'm saying, crazy hard, that's what's going to get you fucked over. You don't got to come in this bitch, ah, right, nigga, what, what's up, whoever want it, nigga. You don't have to show it through that, but in this shit, if you don't do that when you meet a nigga, now niggas calling you soft. That friendly ass nigga, man. That nigga friendly, man. That fuck nigga, man. Friendly ass fuck. Nigga, fuck by. And it's like, hold on, my nigga. Are we in the street or are we in the, the, the music business? What are, we, what are we doing here? And that's, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you as a trap because it's too, they're forcing you to be too gangster to get anything done. They're forcing you to be too gangster to get anything done. My nigga, if I gotta be this hard, how in the fuck am I gonna network with people? I gotta have a fucking uh, 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 a Desert Eagle AK-47 and a fucking knife in my mouth to, to do anything around this bitch. For anybody to look at me. The other video I'm gonna do, uh, the Ren Rucci and Meg Thee Stallion video. That's gonna be crazy too. But the nigga uh, tells Tusi, um, I wanna book you for a show and shit like that. Um, he's trying to get him down there um, to where the fuck he's at so he can take his chains and shit like that. And it's like the way niggas beef nowadays is just so, like, they talking to each other calmly on Instagram Live and, you know, let me book you for a show if you're not scared. And nigga trying to call his manager. It is a whole bunch of shit. Um, I might have to leave those videos in the description box, but I'm not going to put it at the beginning. But it's like... Now, what do you do in that situation? He's trying to book you to come do a show. And he said, if you leave there with your chains, you... You, you gangster, you, you leave it with your chains and um, some shit like you a man, like you got my respect, like what, some bullshit like that. So I'm gonna, so as an artist, what do you do in this situation? What do you do in this situation? I, should, I need to do a video, I, I kinda do, but I don't know. Uh, it's a little dude, uh, it's uh, all right, I'm gonna fuck with you. White boy, his name is Gavin. Lil Esco is his name. I think Lil Esco. Uh, they robbed him and his fucking... He, he was a new Slim Jesus. Um, but it's like... You have to prove... That, that you gangster. You have to prove the shit. Like, everybody is being put in the 6ix9ine situation. Everybody. And... How you're not gonna like nigga, this is this this ain't this ain't the NFL, this is NFL blitz. You're not like my nigga, it's gonna be more entertaining because it's gonna be more injuries, more people getting hurt. And this is why they're watching so so intently. It they're not watching because they like your music. They're watching because they want to see what's going to happen to you. You know. The industry, this is what this is why I'm telling you is a trap because it's coming from the top down. This new um beef driven industry, um, this shit was pushed down from the top. And it may have started with, you know, motherfucker looking at 50 Cent, or it may have started by the industry looking at reality television and recognizing this is the fucking future. This is gonna be all of TV. These people can't tell 
that this is a soap opera. No fucking different. The only different is the way we're shooting it. This is a soap opera. All of these people, the heads of these entertainment industries, the TV industry, uh, the music industry, the, the Broadway industry, the play industry, the dance, they're all, they all fucking know each other. So they're telling each other, yeah, we got a new series coming out. And, and it's like, they're right there. And that's what we can't realize. And that's why I, it's just so hard for me to talk because I have all these thoughts. And that's why you gotta, you gotta go to the Patreon because that's why I can speak freely and just give you ideas that are out of my mind. Because I, I just don't be feeling, so I just don't feel like sometimes that you understand and what I'm saying because there's so many missing pieces to you. In my mind, I, I, I'm trying to convey all of the thoughts, but in order for you to understand this, you have to know this little middle part. Like you gotta have a key to get in, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to have this this piece in order to even put this these two things together. So that's what I try to do on the, on the Patreon. Uh, and we just, if you ain't seen the Dominique Williams store, go see that right now. Um, I did something crazy, uh, a little skit I did that's on there. And we got the new uh, Philadelphia uh, dude that used his child as a shield. That, that shit is up there too. Um, you gotta get to the Patreon. Like if you fuck with the rap trap, you gonna have to go over there because that's, to know my theories that combine and, 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 and put all these, you know, situations together, you have to go there so you can see what I'm talking about. Like see where my mind is at. But, and it, and it has to do with the golf course theory. It has to do with the heads of these industries speaking to each other and us down here not knowing that they are no different than the government having 40 years worth of technology. They're 40 years ahead technology wise. They're already there. To the, to the point where if we saw something that they had, we would think that it's an alien. It, it, would, it would make us seem primitive. Barbaric would be like the fucking caveman first seeing fire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to hit at it with a fucking stick. So these people in the, in the entertainment industry are the same fucking way. They knew what was gonna happen in the '90s when they dropped, you know, uh, real world versus road rules, or maybe that was in 2000s. Probably 2000s. They, they, they could see it. They can see where it was going. They knew. Motherfucker knew what Netflix was going to do. As soon as the internet came. And, and Napster hit. They, they knew that it won't be long before the, the movie industry is over. And we're just. We just on the train. We just on the train. Just riding. And it's just taking us straight to the incinerator. Straight to get fucking cremated. And I'm saying, yo, is it is it any way that since we see that every day you see rapper, they don't even put the motherfuckers name in that shit no more. Um the the the, the fucking dude in what the fuck was that? New Jersey fucking dude, little T Ward. What was it Indianapolis? Indian, Indianapolis. T. Ward convicted on a triple homicide through his own admission, through his lyrics and his song. We don't see where the fuck this shit is going. We don't want to say hold up. And of course we won't say hold up in unison because it's always going to be a nigga out the bunch and shit. I'm going to get that goddamn money. But at what cost? Nigga don't give a fuck. Nigga don't give a fuck. I'm, the reason I'm saying we need a 30-day 30, 30 crime fast in the street is because we're being killed too rapidly. At this point, we have to say, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, whoa. Let's, to, this like, I mean, I guess it's a hooper. 
as a true point guard, I know that chaos. I, I never like the, the 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 running gun. I'm not with the running gun shit. No, I'm going slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. You know, let's let's bring this shit back together. Let whatever momentum they got, let's stop that shit. Slow it down. Bring the ball back up top. All right, let's see what the fuck going on. And that's why you got to be a point guard in order to do that because they the defense might be trying to make you run and gun. So you got to be able to get the fuck off me. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you have to be able to see that. Like, nigga, this shit is going too fucking fast and we're losing. Time out. But as a floor general, it's just I'm going to slow it because ain't no time out in, in this game here. So just slow the ball down. We're not just going to shoot as soon as we get it. No, slow this shit down. Let me see what the fuck is going on. Take a breath. But we have to slow this shit down. So the 30-day crime fast was like, okay, let's get our children, our loved ones off the street. Loved one, please come off the street so we can see what the fuck is going on. We got a way better chance of preserving your life if you're here with us inside. When you're out there, they can do whatever to you. And you're not out there, you know, as far as I'm just going to the guy. No, you out there in motion. And that's how they want you. That's when you're the most fucking vulnerable. And, and the biggest thing is you don't have our protection because we're not going to go with you out there because we know what happens in those woods. It's just you have an addiction and what you're addicted to just happens to be beyond the woods. So you have to go through there, but we know that that's clan land. How in the fuck are we gonna, like, how in the fuck, my nigga, it's the clan. You're not gonna change their mindset. We're gonna have to change ours. Because right now, our mindset isn't wars. Theirs is. We're not on war. We're on feeding our addiction. They're on killing us. They can set traps. They can put what we're addicted to right there within a fucking bear trap. And that's what they're doing. So I say, please, 30 days. Please. Let's slow the ball down. But it seems as if there's a force. Need to put that mirror behind it. It seems as if there's a force. That's where it comes back to the rap trap. It seems as if there's a force that's pushing us to not slow down, to not Mm -mm, don't do that, nigga. That ain't cool, nigga. That ain't what got, nigga. These hoes want niggas with money, nigga. Nigga, you gotta have money, nigga. Get that money. You gotta get this shit the real way. To where, <laughs> if you're not putting yourself in, and you know, they always, you know, girls want the bad boys and shit like that. But it's to the point where, if you're not putting your life in danger, your freedom at risk. And potentially, well, that's good. And potentially, the only chance that your family has to actually has have some, that shit can be down the drain in a drain in a matter of fucking seconds, because they can get you outside. More my words. We, we are due for another big rapper to be murdered here in just a moment. Mark my fucking words. We are due. I'm trying to somebody like Quavo. Um, big artist. Meek Mill. You know what I'm saying? We are due for it. And, and, and we're going to be right back here. Right back at the rap trap. Hey, man. Like, like, and it's the same thing as the me and two shit. Like, 
How much are you going to have to see before you listen to what the fuck I'm telling you? How many more of ours are going to have to suffer and lose everything before you say, you know what? We need to goddamn do something. Okay, my nigga, what the fuck am I over here talking about? The Me and Two movement, it is for a uh, rape claim um, um, reform in the legal system, in a legal process, child custody reform, child support reform, sexual assault claim reform. We have to change the way that we deal with these fucking cases. But in order for that to take place, how it needs to, we have to follow the three S's. We have to take ourselves out of harm's way. It's not safe out there right now. And if you believe that you, uh, he ain't talking to me, he, I understand what he's saying, but he ain't talking to me. You're going to be just like every other nigga that's in my fucking inbox right now. Damn, man, I, I could have, man, I see what you're talking about, man. I could have, man, I, I heard, I was listening to you, man, but I did, I did, I, th I never thought it happened to me. You have no idea. How, I got to save to my phone. Like, I, I, I screenshot the message and I put it in a folder, the me and two folder. I got the three S folder. This isn't a game. You think that I'm in this house with all these dogs, all these cameras, all this protection. And I, I follow the three S's to the T. You think I do that just for fun because I'm a crazy man? I'm a, a, a recluse or a fucking, what do you call it, a hermit? My nigga, I was out there way harder than any nigga was out, out there. Like, really out there. Outside like that. Like, the real way. In a lot of places. I'm not going there. Um, and it's a blessing that I came back home unscathed. And when I say unscathed, that doesn't mean I wasn't shot, stabbed, fucked over, um, caught, uh, given STDs. This by God's grace, they were fucking, you know, chlamydia and shit like that. Rope a dope with, you know what I'm saying? Dope. You know, fuck a bitch for pills. Bitch throw a child on you. Just, you know, but the fact that I came back home, if I would have came back home in a wheelchair, it would have been a blessing. Because the shit I was doing out there. So now I'm coming to you saying, get inside. It's a storm outside. Get inside. Get indoors. Get to safety. But this force that seems as if it's being sent out from the music industry. The artists don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're just puppets. They're merely being used. Their energy is being used. These fucking people are not only CIA agents, the people at the top of the music industry. They're not just CIA agents. They're fucking vampires. They're pu puppeteers. They're, ventri they're ventriloquists. They're talking through the artists. Everything that Kodak Black, NBA Youngboy, so on and so forth is saying, they're being told to say it by that old white, this is a man, Lear Cohen is telling them, is, is he's speaking through them. How does that make you feel? That a old white man is, just read Kodak Black lyrics, that's what he's saying to you. Read the lyrics. Read the lyrics. They're putting it right in your face. Motherfuckers talking about, you know, shout out to um, Busy Bone. Shout, but here's the thing. Anybody, see, like the way Brother Ben X did it. I salute that young man. What? It damn near make you want to like, they got, they got some examples, man. And I'm sure they have bad examples also. But 
them, the, they have some examples that damn that make you want to, man, I'm finna go join none of these, because these motherfuckers got it going on. Run Ben X um, took a clip from a show um, where a rapper was saying uh, something that pertained to the rap trap. And um, Brother Ben X let it be known. Um, go to AO Nation 10 on Instagram. Uh, it's a show on YouTube called The Big Face Podcast. But he came up with a, a theory called the rap trap and he went on to explain what the rap trap was and all that shit and it's like dog you and I, I don't know if he knows how much that meant to me because of course recently um and and since I started this shit man motherfuckers have just been taking taking just taking advantage of the fact that and it, this, this ain't even the industry people, the big people at the top of the stairs who, you know, that are known for taking nigga shit, copywriting it, and, and making money off of it and shit. These, these are like normal motherfuckers. Normal people. Normal people who pose it know how it feels and not give you the fucking credit. Oh, I ain't know nothing about it. I ain't, man, I ain't, they ain't get that from that. What? Hold on, man. Hold on, man. It was a clip of some white man talking at fucking TED Talk. Um, and just talking just word for word spitting out the fucking rap trap. Word for fucking word. Motherfucker catching that shit, man. crazy that a white man gotta say shit for niggas to listen. They're like, man, come on, my nigga. But I, I, I said it to say, um, shout out to Brother Ben X. But, you know, Busy Bone and niggas... Uh, I ain't, I don't even want to say the other thing because I, I don't I don't I don't I'm not gonna beef with YouTube. I'm not gonna beef with anybody in this industry. I made it out of the street alive and free. I'm not y'all are not gonna bait me into harming a person. And, and I, I I have to check myself at times because it's been times when I've wanted to punch somebody or put my hands on them uh, because of you know um feeling played through youtube but it's like you have to understand they really don't mean any home it's just that's the way that they are and there's so many fucked up people in the world and and this internet just get it, it's, it's concentrating the, the, the assholes and shit like that how in the fuck am i hungry i just ate that chicken and rice I hate that shit, man. I'm t and I think that that bullshit chicken and rice. I think that shit. Um, I'm gonna have to check. That ain't no real fucking food, man. That shit don't hold no fucking time, dog. Um, but that when I heard, you know, one of so many people sent me the, the busy bone clip of him talking about, you know, the industry and all. I'm like, man, I don't. And let a nigga shout me out, and let a nigga shout me out, and let it be known. Like from this point forward, and let a nigga shout me out, and let it be known. Hey man, saw this guy on uh, YouTube, man, saying some real powerful stuff by golf course theory, and you know putting shit together, man. Unless they doing that shit, man, just don't even send me that shit, dog. I don't need to know that motherfucker that's taking my shit, man. I, everybody's taking my shit. I don't take nothing from no fucking body, man. If I if, if I mention it, if I, I I say niggas names, man. Shout out to one take Timmy. I listen to that nigga. Like I I feel like I need a goddamn you know just just start fucking shouting everybody out that I even fucking you know that might be underground or some shit like that. It, this shit it is boys. That shit really will make you mad. And I'm hungry now, so that that shit make me even matter. But I'm not with the the spirit, the 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 the, the wizardry bullshit. I'm to, I'm talking about real shit. I'm not talking about no spells a motherfucker is reading. I'm telling you, read Kodak Black and NBA Youngboy's lyrics and understand that they are puppets. You say, how the fuck can that be? How the fuck can uh uh Leroy Cohen? He not writing uh Kodak Black shit. 
They are signing people that push forward their agenda. You would think that their agenda is to make money. You can, I mean, obviously you can make money off of fucking. I'm not going there. Um. If we want the bloodshed to stop, making posts, sharing posts, making comments ain't going to do shit. Some action has to be done. And what I might have to do, I might have to take the rap trap outside. And I might have to go out there on my big speaker and start speaking publicly. That's what I might have to do. And I might be hungry right now and being delusional, but I think I'm going to start doing that because I want to make sure that people are hearing my message and having a chance to think, hey, what do I need to do? I'm going to speak about the 30-day crime fast, and I'm going to speak about what we need to do, have a mass exodus of the music industry. All rap music needs to stop. We need to stop production for 30 days. Maybe not the fucking 30 days. All music needs to stop. No music. No music comes out for 30 fucking days. We boycotting for 30 days until we figure out why in the fuck our heads are being put on fucking stakes. How we continue to be killed. Yet this motherfucker, he, he... you know how many artists then died under his fucking watch? And no one looks up there. No one even blinks an eye. I was talking to the, um, I was talking to DJ. Um, uh, you know, y'all yeah, know the DJ is, is something like a mentor to me. And, um, he was speaking about the Nipsey situation and, uh, he said something about uh, they knocked them out the same Pumas. That the Puma is gonna take them Pumas and put them on another artist. Like he and he was speaking about how these brands that endorse the rappers and tell them to go outside and be seen and shit like that. When this type of shit happens. They don't say shit to the family. They go and pick their shoes up and go put, on, put them on another artist. Make, they'll make another uh, fucking Puma put his face on them. They don't give the family shit. They don't give a fuck. We're monkeys to these people. We're primates. Not only are we expendable, our job is to get killed. Maimed, robbed, harmed. That's our job. I really want to, and I'm hungry, so I got to, I got to cut this off because I'm, I'm about to start talking some other shit. And that's why they say when you fast, you see different. I'm, I, I, I want to start doing that too. Um, as you can see, I'm hungry. I'm gonna start rambling and shit, but I, I just wanted to bring that up and let it be. Let's let's bring some clarification to this whole thing of niggas will book you just to book you. You having legal firearms is you need to go get a felony so that you need to go catch a felony so that you can be cool. That doesn't seem just a little bit twisted in our mind. That what's cool to us is to go through pain, put our family through pain. That's what's cool. Nobody's doing shit for finesse two times, and when he get out, nobody's gonna support him. They're gonna be looking right at fucking six nine. Ain't that a goddamn? Ain't nobody gonna fuck with Bobby Smurda. D, do you know that? And I need to, I need to talk about that also. Bobby Smurda versus, versus Six Nine and how they get treated. Do you know that niggas will give Six Nine? They'll do a song with Six Nine for free 
while charging Bobby Smurda and telling him it's his business. And a street artist will do that. It's his business. We have to destroy what is now, what's being called the rap industry right now. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. We need to destroy it and decide what is this going to be? Is this going to be fueled by gangsters or it's going to be fueled by and like I said, us as street niggas, as gangsters, we need to just, hey man, look, if, if we want our voice to matter, we have to start supporting shit. Right now, this industry is ran by 13 year old girls and we know it is because we see who's winning. If it was ran by street niggas, the niggas that's winning would not be winning. But that, that's what it is. Let, let me go get me something to eat. Um, get your shit together, go to the Patreon, this, this is where I can get more of my thoughts out like I need to. Um, make sure that you hit the PayPal. Make sure that you hit the Cash App. YouTube is is part of this shit. Like they, so support the platform so we can continue to do the shit that we do. Um, I salute everybody who um, doesn't wait on the next person to do it. They make sure that they show love so that this show can continue and we can continue doing the shit that we need to. Um, I really do want to go outside um, if not this month, then maybe next month, go out there on my speakerphone, the whole thing will be recorded. I might go live, but I want to go out and speak to people about the 30 day crime fast and uh, the 30 day. I have to find a name for the, the rap industry fast, but I need to tell people about what's going on with this rap trap to people that might not know. See you on the next. Love, love.